The M3 Pro MacBook Pro is a great laptop for all intents and purposes. The M3 Pro is blazingly fast, especially in graphics. Battery life is astounding, and you're getting a better display alongside those stellar speakers in a rock-solid aluminum design. So this is what I'll focus on here. As you'd expect, this is a stellar laptop with a gorgeously premium design, vividly accurate display, impressive power in M3 Pro and beefy battery life. But is it really worth spending the extra $400 to get this machine over the new lower-cost 14-inch Pro with M3? Or is this entry easy to ignore? M3 Pro MacBook Pro Design Back in black, and so much better for it. Same great utilitarian design as previous models. We all know Apple's song and dance by now with each redesign comes several years of sticking rigidly to it. In the case of the Touch Bar Max, that was a bad thing, but for the 14-inch Pro shell, it most certainly isn't. This premium construction of 100% recycled aluminum and class adding to a total of 32% recycled content in the device looks just as mean, lean and ready to rip through your tasks with ruthless efficiency as before. The squared off chassis provides a confidence in its durability and exudes luxury with its all-metal construction, which is highlighted even further with this new space black colorway. Well, Apple says black, it's more of a darker space gray, but the end result looks like the kind of MacBook Pro you'd see Bruce Wayne edit a raw photo of Batman on, you know, for the gram, or whatever it's called in Gotham City. Put. Simply, I love the new finish, but that much-touted anti-fingerprint seal isn't as anti-fingerprint as you may expect. After a while, you will see those telltale marks of use again, but that's par for the course with Apple systems. That means in the M3 Pro MacBook Pro, you're getting something that may be a little heavy when compared to the likes of the M2 MacBook Air, but is still a seriously portable machine. Our review unit comes in the space black color scheme, which looks cool, but also has the benefit of better resistance to fingerprints on the metal chassis thanks to a new anodization process. A mostly stunning display. As it should, the MacBook Pro 14 comes with one of the better laptop screens on the market, the one 4.2-inch Liquid Retina XDR display. With a resolution of 3024 by 1964 pixels to 54 pixels per inch, it's extremely close to full 4K. What sets the Liquid Retina XDR display apart from most laptop screens is a combination of technologies. First, the MacBook Pro has an IPS panel. But as those panels go, it's high in quality. Broad color coverage and excellent detail come standard. Behind that panel are thousands of mini LEDs for backlighting, which provide higher brightness deeper contrast, and tighter control for HDR effects, leading Apple to coin the term XDR for extreme dynamic range. As for the speakers, nothing has changed over previous generations of MacBook Pro, and they continue to produce the best sound I've ever heard out of a laptop. The six-speaker setup with force-canceling woofers is capable of filling a room with its high volume, while producing an impressive level of bass that complements the mids and highs with no distortion whatsoever. MacBook Pro Ports Now with extra Thunderbolt All versions of the 14-inch MacBook Pro have a MagSafe charging port, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, and a 3.5mm audio jack on the left side of the chassis. On the right is an HDMI output for connecting to a TV or monitor and an SDXC card slot for grabbing photos or video from a camera. Memory card, but only the M3 Pro and Max versions of the 14-inch MacBook Pro include a bonus third Thunderbolt 4 port, which means an extra connection with charging, DisplayPort support, and up to 40GB per second data throughput. With the extra port also comes expanded monitor support. The M3 base model supports just one external display with up to 6000 resolution and 60Hz refresh rate. But the M3 Pro configuration with the extra Thunderbolt port adds support for a second 6060Hz monitor, plus an additional 4000 resolution monitor at 144Hz. And, if you really want mind-blowing resolution or speed, you can also opt to run a single external display. But at 8000 resolution and 60 Hz or a single 4000 monitor at 240 Hz, which is ideal for gaming or video content work. Wireless connectivity includes Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3, giving you the best and current standards for networking and accessories. M3 Pro MacBook Pro Performance This is where things start to get a little interesting. 
Dissecting the machine will reveal its baseline M3 Pro chip with 11 CPU and 14 GPU cores, which is combined with 18GB RAM and a 512GB SSD. Other upgrades include an enhanced 16-core neural engine, an upgraded media engine that supports a V1 decoding, and of course that new 3 nanometers process to stuff 37 billion transistors on its silicon. But while there are some significant gains to be found when putting the standard M2 up against M320 faster Geekbench 5 multi-core result and M2 Max versus M3 Max 47 faster Geekbench 6 multi-core result, the differences are slimmer when it comes to stacking it up against the M2 Pro MacBook Pro. While I'm glad they've sorted out the SSD speeds from chopping them in half for M2, this is a smaller improvement. In fact, the standard M3 is getting rather close to that M2 Pro power potential, with numbers that most users will not have a problem with whatsoever. The real difference comes down to when you put that media engine and graphics to work, where you can see that the GPU of the M3 Pro starts to pull more of a lead over M3 and M2 Pro. Render performance in Final Cut Pro is up to 7.4x faster than the 13-inch MacBook Pro with Core i7 III and up to 60% faster than the 13-inch MacBook Pro with M1.2. Code compilation in SCODE is up to 3.7x faster than the 13-inch MacBook Pro with Core i7 III and up to 40% faster than the 13-inch MacBook Pro with M1.2. Spreadsheet performance in Microsoft Excel is up to 3.5x faster than the 13-inch MacBook Pro with Core i7 III and up to 40% faster than the 13-inch MacBook Pro with M1.2. So, on paper, Apple has done the deed. The M3 Pro continues to be the faster mid-range system of the MacBook Pro lineup, but you have to seriously ask yourself if those additional 47 seconds of time saved are worth 400, even more so when you take a look at the savings on outgoing M2 Pro models and that 30 for second difference. Graphics and Gaming Tests Game mode in Mako's Sonoma delivers an optimized gaming experience and works with all Mac games, including new titles like Baldur's Gate 3. For an Apple-specific graphics test, we use 3 DMARC's Wildlife Extreme, running in unlimited mode. Unlike our usual 3 DMARC tests, Wildlife runs natively on Apple Silicon, letting us measure graphics performance among different Mac systems. The higher the score, the better. For cross-platform testing, we use a version of our standard GFX Bench test, here running on Apple's Metal Graphics API. It stress tests both low-level routines, like texturing and high-level game-like image rendering. We run two subtests, Aztec Ruins 1 for 4OP, which relies on the Opengal Application Programming Interface API, and Car Chase 108OP, which uses hardware tessellation. We record the results in frames per second Fs. Higher numbers are better. In the Mac specific for our testing Wildlife Extreme, the M3 Pro based MacBook Pro 14 landed right between the high powered M2 and M3 Max chips and the more basic M2 based Air and defunct 13 inch MacBook Pro. This is where we expected the M3 Pro to land, threading the needle between basic and Max, but still driving enough performance to tempt any Mac owners with first and second gen chips to upgrade. M3 Pro MacBook Pro battery life and heat, lasts for 17 hours and 22 minutes, does not break a sweat at all. Apple Silicon's superpower has always been its thermal management and battery life. That is no different with the M3 Pro MacBook Pro, as it's a stamina king that gains nearly an hour over its older M2 Pro brother. This comes down to the configuration of cores the M2 Pro has a higher proportion of performance cores, whereas the M3 Pro opts for more efficiency cores. This leads to it being the second longest lasting MacBook Pro of the new generation behind the standard M3 model. Plus, on the temperature front, nothing troubles the thermal efficiency of this system, even under the intense pressure of our own lab testing. M3 Pro MacBook Pro, keyboard, touchpad, and webcam. Still one of the best keyboard and touchpad experiences on a laptop. Nice clarity and color on the 1080p webcam. Another three things that remain untouched from previous generation MacBook Pros is its keyboard, touchpad and webcam. And much like a fine wine, they are aging just fine. 
Your fingers fly across the spacious touchpad and clicks are responded to with an impressive haptic force that makes every interaction feel intentful. This is paired with a chiclet keyboard. That is a joy to type on with its scissor switches and 1mm of key depth. Once you get the hang of the multi-touch gestures and keyboard shortcuts baked into Mako's Sonoma, you will be flying through your work with the greatest of ease. As for the 1080p Facetime webcam, the image signal processor and neural engine combine to make for a nice picture quality that combines a nice sharpness with well-balanced color. For all intents and purposes, this is a great machine that continues to defy the logic set by even the best Windows laptops. Battery life continues to be great, even though M3 Pro absolutely slaps in power and graphical performance. The utilitarian aesthetic is made all the more badass with a space black finish, which is complemented by a typing and clicking experience that continues to be one of the best in the industry.